Now we're going to be diving into string handling, so let's get started. When it comes to strings, a Java string is a sequence of characters. They are objects of type string. Once a string object is created, it cannot be changed. Strings are immutable. To get changeable strings, we use the class called StringBuffer. The default constructor creates an empty string. Here we have an example. String s equals new string. Let's take a look at creating strings. If the data array in the above example is modified after the string object str is created, then the str remains unchanged. We can construct a string object by passing another string object. For example, string str2 equals new string. Let's look at string operations. The length method returns the length of a string. And here is an example. The addition or plus operator is used to concatenate two or more strings. And we have another example here. String concatenation in Java. In Java, string concatenation forms a new string that is the combination of multiple strings. And there are two ways to concat a string in Java. We have by the string concatenation operator and by the concat method. Now let's look at string concatenation by the string concatenation operator. The Java string concatenation operator is used to add strings. For example, here we have a University of Geek example where the output would be University of Geek. Let's continue. The Java compiler transforms the above code to this. The string concatenation operator then produces a new string by appending the second operand onto the end of the first operand. The string concatenation operator can concat not only the string, but the primitive values also. Here is an example. Now let's look at string concatenation by the concat method. The string concat method concatenates the specified string to the end of the current string. And here is the syntax. Let's see this example of the string concat method. If you'd like, I'd like you to try this out for yourself and observe the results. Now let's take a look at string operations. Characters in a string can be extracted in a number of ways. Here in this example, this returns the character at the specified index. An index ranges from zero to length. Here we have one. The first character of the sequence is at index zero. The next is at index one and so on as for array indexing. Get chars copies characters from this string into the destination character array. Equals compares the invoking string to the specified object. The result is true if and only if the argument is not null and is a string object that represents the same sequence of characters as the invoking object. Equals ignore case compares this string to another string, ignoring the case considerations. Two strings are considered equal, ignoring case if they are of the same length, and corresponding characters in the two strings are equal, ignoring that case. Here is an example. Start with 
tests if this string starts with the specified prefix and ends with tests if this string ends with the specified suffix. In this case, starts with tests if this string starts with the specified prefix beginning at a specified index. Compare to compares two strings lexicographically. The result is a negative integer if this string object lexicographically precedes the argument string. The result is a positive integer if this string object lexicographically follows the argument string. The result is zero if the strings are equal. Index of searches for the first occurrence of a character or substring. It returns minus one if the character does not occur. Public int index of returns the index within the string of the first occurrence of the specified character. Public int index of string str returns the index within this string of the first occurrence of the specified substring. And here is an example. As you can see, we also have a fair few other string operations that we can use to get the results that we need. Here we have two others. One that returns the index within this string of the first occurrence of the specified character starting the search at the specified index. And this one returns the index within this string of the first occurrence of the specified substring starting at the specified index. And here's another example. Last index of searches for the last occurrence of a character or substring. The methods of this are similar to index of. Substring returns a new string that is a substring of this string. The substring begins with the character at the specified index and extends to the end of this string. And here we have two other examples. Replace returns a new string resulting from replacing all occurrences of old char in this string with new char. Concate concatenates the specified string to the end of this string. If the length of the argument string is zero, then this string object is returned. Otherwise, a new string object is created, containing the invoking string with the contents of the str appended to it. Trim returns a copy of the string with leading and trailing white space admitted, as you can see in this example. Value of returns the string representation of the char array argument. Here we have a few other forms of this. To lowercase converts all of the characters in a string to lowercase and to uppercase, converts all of the characters in this string to uppercase, as you can see in our examples. Let's take a look at string buffer. A string buffer is like a string, but it can be modified. The length and content of the string buffer sequence can be changed through certain method calls. String buffer defines three constructors. We have the string buffer itself, string buffer int size, and string buffer string str. When it comes to string buffer operations, the principal operations on a string buffer are the append and insert methods, which are overloaded so as to accept data of any type. Here are a few append methods. The insert methods adds the characters to a specified point.
Here we have a few insert methods. The delete string buffer operation removes the characters in a substring of this string buffer. The substring begins at the specified start and extends to the character at index end minus one or to the end of the string buffer if no such character exists. If start is equal to the end, no changes are made. Replace replaces the characters in a substring of this string buffer with characters in the specified string. And the substring returns a new string that contains a subsequence of characters currently contained in this string buffer. The substring begins at the specified index and extends to the end of the string buffer. Here you can see three examples which show these string buffer operations. We have capacity. The capacity returns the current capacity of the string buffer. With char at, the specified character of the sequence, currently represented by the string buffer, as indicated by the index argument is returned. With reverse, the character sequence contained in this string buffer is replaced by the reverse of the sequence. And with length, this returns the length of this string buffer. As you can see, there are also more examples. With get chars, characters are copied from this string buffer into the destination character array DST. The first character to be copied is at index src begin. The last character to be copied is at index src end minus one, as you can see in this example. And the set length operation sets the length of the string buffer. Here is an example. Feel free to try out this example code on your own or post in the discussion if you have any questions. That is the end of this lecture, and I'll see you in the next one, where we learn even more about Java programming.